from the UK to around the world. To around the world. You're watching another video from Atari user. The magazine for all Atari formats. From the Atari 2600 to the Atari Jaguar. We've got you covered. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atari user. And visit atariuser.com to download your copy of our latest issue today. Atariuser.com, the magazine for the Atari community. Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing a virtual unboxing of an Atari 1050 disk drive which hopefully should be exactly the same as it would have been back in the mid 80s. So as you can see from the box, it's typical Warner Communications era packaging, nice silver box, nice big picture of the disk drive, Atari logo and a big thing here. It says it ships with DOS 3, the double density disk operating system. Let's turn it around for you. So as you can see, a bit of information on the drive there in several different languages. And a bit of information on the back. So many people would have bought an Atari computer. They wouldn't have bought anything else apart from a few game cartridges. If you're in the UK, most people had access to a cassette unit and quite a large variety of games that could be purchased. But again, if you didn't have a disk drive, you were really limiting your options. If you are using real hardware today, then I really recommend that you get hold of a disk drive as that will really change your perspective on your Atari computer. It really opens up a whole new world of opportunities. So I've taken the disk drive out of the box because these things can be a real pain to get in and out. So I've cheated a little bit, I do apologize. So now we're gonna move on to actually looking at what's inside. Okay, so let's open the box. So let's take off the uh, top part of the polished iron, or as an avid Atari collector would say, one of the internal polys. We'll put that to one side. So then inside you've got the owner's guide. You've got also a guide on DOS 3. This is all still sealed up. Now in typical Atari fashion, this looks quite comprehensive. Looks like there's a lot of information in there, but this would have been done for at least five different languages. So you've got what you need to get your drive set up and going. There'll be some basic information on DOS 3 inside there, but not much more. If we look at the 1050 disk drive itself. So what we have here is a nice base plate there, Atari 1050. Typical XL era styling. It's a tandem mechanism inside, drive latch, disk activity light, power light, power on and off switch. On the back, you've got two SIO ports. You've got your drive select switch and you've got your power input. Then you've also got, this would have come courtesy of Atari UK, a software pack. So this includes the home filing manager, Atari Paint, and the payoff, which was quite a decent text adventure game. Two discs, this gets inside there, still sealed up. You've also got the disk operating system. So this would have been DOS 3. So this would have been shipped originally with the 1050s. The uh, DOS 3 was designed to be a major upgrade to DOS 2, designed to take advantage of the extra capacity of the Atari 1050. And also Atari envisaged that floppy disks would start shipping with increased capacity. The problem with DOS 3 was it wasn't backwards compatible with DOS 2. And unless you lived in a cave somewhere, you quickly got rid of it. Atari later went on to release an upgrade to DOS 2, DOS 2.5, which became the standard really for all Atari disk drive users. Finally, we've got a software catalog. 
As you can see from here, the date is September 1985. So this suggests that this was actually one of the last Atari 1050s that would have been in distribution. We've also got a power adapter here inside this box, which I'm not going to get out for you today. And we've got an SIO connector cable. So it's worth remembering then that the Atari 1050 was in production from around June 1983 and would have stayed in production till towards the end of 1985. Okay guys, so we've got this uh, Atari 1050 plugged in and turned on and ready to go. So one word of advice, uh, never connect or disconnect your SIO cable from the back of your computer or any Atari peripherals whilst they are powered on. Uh, especially as these machines are now getting on quite a bit, never disconnect or connect the cable while any of the devices in the chain have power. Okay, so we've put the DOS 3 disk in the disk drive, so at the top we have the disk drive from the unboxing, at the bottom we have the disk drive that featured in one of our first videos. This is one that came from Africa that we did a service on to get back and running again. You can see that in one of our earlier YouTube videos. So we're ready to go. So what we're going to do now is turn on the 800XL that we've got uh, doing a fantastic job for us this evening. And uh, let's see what happens. So you can see that the drive has booted quickly into uh, BASIC. So we've got, the, like I said, the DOS 3.0 disk in there. So let's type in DOS and let's take a quick look at DOS 3. It's been a while, probably at least 20 odd years since I've seen DOS 3, so you'll have to just bear with me. Let's have a look what it looks like. So as you can see, the DOS 3 main directory looks quite a lot different to what you'd expect from DOS 2.5. So you've got uh, a copy function, uh, initialize disk function, which is uh, format, erase, rename, protect, unprotect, and you've got the file index. So we're just going to press return and press return again. So this should give us everything that's on the disk. There you go, so that's come back with a quick directory of what is on a master DOS 3 diskette. Press return again, and uh, there you have it. So DOS 3, it's got the copyright, 1980, copyright 1983 rather date on it. It wasn't very popular. Um, the idea behind DOS 3 was to take advantage of the extra capacity of the Atari 1050 disk drive compared to the 810 and also potentially to take advantage of higher capacity floppy disks. It didn't really work out that way. DOS 3 essentially organized sectors into blocks and it wasn't uh, backward compatible with DOS 2. So once you converted something over to DOS 3, you couldn't convert it back again. So it was widely panned. DOS 2.5 was the replacement, which pretty much everybody got to use. And uh, it's worth noting that Atari was considering another DOS to use with the 1050 and the new XR machines that never saw the light of day and that was DOS 4. We'll cover that in a later video. Okay so we've just put in a disc which hopefully should give us the Atari Fuji Swan demo. I'll be honest I haven't run this disc for again this is another 20 odd years so hopefully it's going to work and it should give you an idea of, uh, once again, how fast the Atari 1050 is. So crossing fingers at this point to see if this disc actually works. 
So the noise you're getting there is because this isn't quite a standard uh, format. So it's loading sort of data in chunks. Tommy logo in all its glory. And I hope there's going to be a swan somewhere. There you go. That's the famous Atari Fuji Swan demo. There you go. Power without the price. So this demo was originally uh, put together for the CES show. Just to showcase the uh, Atari's graphical capabilities. And it's helped us tonight just by uh, giving you an idea of uh, what the Atari 1050 sounds like in operation. Personally, I find it quite soothing. Maybe I'm a bit strange. But uh, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll be bringing you more videos as fast as we can make them. Take care.